His, that is the knowledge he introduced to earth. Knives, spears, and so on and so on. Azazel is the one who was responsible for it. Now, and another one, there are others who taught people witchcraft. Witchcraft. Do you remember why God says witches must be burnt? It is, it is a knowledge not of this earth. <laughs> it's satanic knowledge. My brother was taking his wife. I don't want to tell you where. At night, his wife was very sick. And they were driving somewhere. I don't want to say where. Through the night. They were going to a hospital. If I mention the hospital, you will know where it is. So I will not say. So they were driving very fast. And then suddenly, the driver and him, his wife, on board, the lights, the headlight just went, went off. And they are driving at 100 kilometers per hour. So he told the driver, stop the car. He said, no, I can't. He said, why? Because it's the wrong place to stop. He said, but how do you see that? I said, I'll try my best. After 100 meters, the lights came back. A witch was crossing the road. And... <laughs> you understand? Yeah, so... It's a knowledge that was introduced to earth, to human beings. So quickly, I, I don't want to waste time there, but I told you, you'll have questions, you'll study and find things that will blow your head. Now, this is because I told you that the idea is repudiated by theologians because of the issue of spirits. You get what I'm saying? I want you to understand. So that when you find, in your study, you will find those discussions all over the place as you study. This came out through the Qumran manuscripts. You've heard about Qumran manuscripts? If you search uh, Qumran documents, Qumran is a, is a cave on the Dead, Dead Sea shores. A young boy found some, some old scrolls. One of, was of the Bible, the, the the Old Testament and New Testament, 1950, talking 1950, and other scrolls. They are included in, they are called Hebrew literature. But the reason why I say it's not safe to think they are apocryphal, they were written between the five, 400 years between Malachi and Matthew, because a lot of books were written, and they are rejected because there was no prophet in Israel during that time. The reason I am saying this is because, come on, open to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 10. Quickly go there. Joshua chapter 10. I hope I'm right. When the sun was stopped in the sky, okay? You remember the incident? Uh, I just want to get the verse. I didn't write it down. I just want to get it. You can get it right now. The sun stands still. You, you find it chapter 10 from verse number 12. And then... Um, uh, the verse I want you to see is verse number 10. Verse number 10. Let's read it. Uh, 13, sorry. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed or stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. Okay. Where is this record kept? The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is not in the Bible. It's not the canonized book. But it's part of the literature of, of the Hebrew people. Now, I need you to know what they are called. They are called extra-canonical Bible-endorsed literature. Because if they were not accepted, then the Bible should not have referred to them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in God, God's spirit allowed them to be mentioned and quoted. And they're quoted, like I said before, they're quoted by Peter and Jude. Jude is the brother of Jesus Christ. So these are extra canonical books 
but Bible endorsed. All right? Hello? So don't quickly rush and say they are apocryphal writings because apocryphal writings were rejected. But again, why were they then not included? There are several books that are not included and they are mentioned. You, you know that? You know them? There are books that are mentioned in the Bible that are not included. I'll give you a whole list of them. Not now. I'll give you a whole list of them. Then you can read the Bible and find them. Now what I need to know is this group of watchers also mentioned in Daniel chapter 4. Are you there? Daniel chapter 4. Go there quickly. Daniel chapter 4. After Nebuchadnezzar was told to go and eat grass. Alright? Run there quickly. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Are you there? Mm. Verse number 17. All right? It says, this decision is by the decree of watchers. So there's a, there's a cluster or group of angels that are called who? Watchers. This is the group referred to by the extra canonical source I referred to. 200 of them fell. Or according to Jude, sinned and left their station. They have a role that is not the usual role of angels. So you don't classify them with angels. They have a role and if you take for example Michael in Daniel chapter 12. Look at it quickly. Daniel 12. Uh, Daniel chapter 12 um, the, the, the Bible says that this watcher is called Michael and at that time Michael shall stand the great prince who stands watch over the sons of of your people and there shall be a time of trouble now there's, there's a discussion among theologians whether Michael is Jesus Christ yeah it's a big discussion now, the same discussion is there about the angel of the Lord. Do you remember Moses, uh, when he saw the burning bush, he stands and an angel speaks to him, remove your shoes, and he asks uh, him, who are you? When he was going later, he said, tell them that I am. Remember? Yeah, the same angel met Abraham. It's called angel of the Lord, met Abraham uh, with two others. And Abraham entertains them, hosts them for lunch, and after that, they leave. But as they leave, two go ahead, and one remains behind to talk to Abraham. But as they converse, Abraham discovers this is somebody special. He calls him the Lord. He calls him the Lord. Now, so these discussions are ongoing, and, and uh, they are valid. You can interpret them from your study. Uh, you can interpret them to Michael, and the angel of the Lord could be referring to Jesus Christ in pre-incarnate state. Hmm? pre-incarnate uh, uh, state of his life. Now, that said, we are left with a question then. We want to go into the New Testament. All right, did I leave out something? Yeah, I left out one more thing, one more thing. The Bible, I told you that the Bible also talks about a chimera, a chimera. Second uh, Samuel chapter 20, come on, chapter 23. Go there quickly, then we can move on to I'll come back to Daniel 12, then connect Revelation. Uh, that, uh, Second Samuel chapter number 23. 23. Second Samuel 23. Are you there? Second Samuel 23. And verse number 20. Verse number 20 says, Benaiah. Benaiah was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man from Kabzil, who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like men of Moab. Two what? Lion-like. Now, the word used in Hebrew is Ariel. Ariel-like. Or Ariel men. Ariel men are lion men. What? 
lion man. So in the translations, they really struggle because they don't want to bring in this idea of chimeras. The, the, the translators are very careful. But, but the original helps you to understand. I have pictures of this lion man of Moab. I have them. I'll, I'll show you the graphics when I'll be ready. Yeah, so a human being, a man who has a lion head. Uh, this man, Benaya, killed how many of them? Two. And they were where? In Moab. Moab are those people who are as tall as what? Moabites. In other words, these are the things, the gods of Moab. The gods of Moab. The lion like this man killed them. And, and so on. There is another one more text. There are two references to this. You, you can reference them. Just look for the other reference. It's in Chronicles. The same text. But in short, let's close the chapter so that we can move forward. All right? I want us to close this so we move forward. In short, the discussion of, uh, of Genesis 6 has never been considered fully because of the fears of the spirits that never die. Okay? Because it amounts to contradicting the fact that men die when they die. All right? But I want you to also understand that our discussion of death has never been fully understood. We call death what? As Seventh-day Adventists. Unconscious sleep. Okay? Now, if it is un yeah? unconscious sleep or sleep, let me ask you, when you are asleep, are you dead? You are asleep, right? But are you conscious? All right. Now, leave it, leave it. You, 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 you leave it and ask yourself a few questions. But what I want you to know is that there are passages of Scripture, there are passages of Scripture that has caused confusion. In Revelation, for example, there are spirits of men at the altar crying to God for what? For revenge. And we struggle to interpret it. You, read, you study the book of Job, chapter number 3. Job talks about the dead being somewhere and they don't trouble each other. Even the rich don't trouble their slaves. Yes, death is a mystery that we just put it aside as unconscious sleep. And God makes sure that every one of us practices how to die before you die. We all sleep every night in preparation for death. Everyone. Everyone. We all practice. Now, and if that is true, then you can see that when people are sleeping, they don't know what goes on, but there are things that go on. You understand? Yeah, but leave it like that. I don't want you to get confused. I, just leave it like that. It's just an unconscious sleep. And as a result, we don't talk about it more because we would get into the trap that theologians were trying to save us from. That spirits... No, no, there's one more. Jesus says, don't fear those who are able to kill the body, but they cannot kill? Question. So there is a soul and there is a spirit that are separate. No. That would be the thing I was talking about yesterday, the, the Greek thing. We would be caught in that trap to think that soul is eternal and body is mortal. We would get into those traps. And, 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 the, and our doctrine is clear that we are a one. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, may the Lord sanctify your spirit, your body, and your soul. So we are body, soul, and spirit, which means mind, body, and spirit, but in one. No dichotomy. And yet when we die, Jesus says, Don't just fear those who can kill this one. They cannot kill the other one. Which means there is a part of us that only God can kill. You get Huh? Yeah, only God is able to destroy part of us. So before you get that second destruction there, because it's called the second death, what happens between this one and the second death if you die? So the dead will hear? How? No. He'll call them to life. He'll call them to life. So how will they hear him so that they can come out? 
it's a mystery that we should leave it like that. Just leave it. Just leave it the way it is. Hmm? Just leave it. Just know people die and they sleep, okay? In the meantime, there is a problem. It's a big problem. And the problem is, there are demons around that came out of superhuman creatures. All right? Just leave it like that also so that we can move from there into the New Testament. Why I'm doing this is because there is a discussion in Revelation chapter 9 which is so serious that we never, we never read it with understanding. We, we, the interpretation given particularly by Maxwell, uh, uh, Dr. Maxwell, has interpreted chapter 9 as Islam. Have you read chapter 9, Revelation, interpretation by Maxwell? That Islam. But I disagree with him. I disagree with him. So, uh, let's leave it. I, I don't want you to get lost. Let's leave it that way. But let's move from Daniel 12 says, Dan, uh, you Daniel, seal the book. Seal the book. Why seal the book? Why seal the book? Daniel 12 again. Go there. Go there. Why seal the book? Daniel 12. And at that time, which time is this? The time of the end. Our time. Our time. Are you following what I'm saying? Our time. Daniel 12 refers to our time. It's called end time. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Okay? Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness will, like the stars forever and ever. Verse number four. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall I want you to understand that the sealing has to do with events of the end. They were sealed. The words and the prophecies were sealed until the time of the end. But interestingly, and usually, you know, we usually read that text in passing. We just read it in, in, in passing. Say, knowledge, people shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall. And we just think it is what kind of knowledge? The time of the end prophecies, Daniel says, will be connected with discoveries that will come as a result of travel, traveling, movement, people moving from one point to another. And as a result, knowledge will, yeah, I don't want you to miss that because I told you about the flight that was lost. You remember? Remember the flight? Now, now you go home and do this research for yourself. I want you to take a software, a software, it's called a flight something software. The software used to check flights. You can check your flight from Nairobi to the destination. There are software for that. Okay? Um, you pick one. And especially our brothers in the south, Zimbabwe, the shower power, you will help us a lot because you are in the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is the equator. Are we in the southern hemisphere in Nairobi? Yes, we are. You could try it. Even here. Take the software and track a flight that is going that is going into the Indian Ocean. Any flight, just track it. The 
time it departs and the time it will arrive. If you cross the equator, this other side, you will see that flight from start to the end. You will see it live. But on this side, you won't see it. It's deliberately not shown. As soon as it departs, as soon as it leaves Nairobi, for example, uh, and approaching the Indian Ocean, an hour or less into the Indian Ocean, it vanishes. Just disappears. And then it will show up a few minutes before landing. It is a deliberate thing. GPS means global positioning system. It means it's a global thing. So there's no part, it will not work. But the sea of the southern hemisphere does not cover GPS. Or GPS doesn't cover it. And it's deliberate. Why? Because there's a part in the southern hemisphere you are not supposed to know. Completely beyond civilian access. That pilot chose to break the rule. And, you know, if you're flying from Australia, you can actually take a flight across the South Pole to reach South America, can't you? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's easy and short. Australia, South America. But there is no such flight. It doesn't exist. It is deliberately covered. Why? There is a secret about the South Pole. No one should know among us. And this is why I was telling you that the prison of the fallen ones, the Bible says they were locked up. Did you, did you hear the Bible say? They were locked up until the day of judgment. So where are they locked? This is connected with Revelation 20. Very quickly, so that I can stop here. But we will do the study. We, I, I, I'm just jumping, but I want to finish so that you can see. Revelation 20 says, I saw an angel come from... Come on, read it with me. 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Having what? A key of the bottomless pit. And a what? A great chain in his hand. Next verse. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Come on, the next. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for sure. Now, our understanding of this verse is that it is literal. Okay? Because 1,000 years are going to be exactly 1,000 years. What we are not agreed about is whether the, ch the chaining is literal or symbolic. Because our interpretation is that we will have gone to heaven with Jesus and the dead, I mean the, the rest will be dead. And the devil will be left here roaming alone. That is the chain. That's the chain that we, we understand that to be the chain. But is that it? Where, so where do, you do, where do you do the line between the literal and symbolic in that verse? Where do you say up to here is symbolic and up to here is literal? Where? The Bible prophecy has never given us such confusion. It draws a line. They are symbolic and they are literal things. Very clear. So, is a chain symbolic? Is the bottomless symbolic? People say it's the world when there will be nobody. And Ellen White says so too. Okay? But there is a bottomless pit. There is a bottomless pit. And when we study chapter 17, you will discover that the beast will come from the bottomless pit problem with this is that because we say it is the earth, then we imagine that the beast, the last one, 
the last one, will actually come from among us. But let me tell you, the Bible is clear. Bottomless pit is called Abu Sos. It is, it is a literal place. And I'll show you from scripture. Okay? So for now, I want us to end by saying there is a connection between the, the arrest of the, the fallen watchers and the binding of Satan and his angels and the mysterious south. It's a connection. And scientists have found out and they don't want you to know. They don't want. Why? Because it will create a problem. The first time it was discovered is 1958. When it was found out, they had to send military, a whole contingent of military, to try and go do something because there are things happening there. <laughs> and it was a disaster. America lost planes and they had to withdraw quickly. And when they withdrew, the following year, it was 56, so 58, a law was passed that says no one should be allowed to go to the South Pole except the military. Except the military. No one. Those who go are guided up to the edges of it. You know, it's a snow place. Ice, snow. So you go up to the edges and you are told this is the, the South Pole. Go back. You can't, for example, go freely. And, and, and this followed something called military nuclear testing. 1958, 59, 60, 61, 62. And they stopped. Because it was finally agreed. Kumbe there is God there is God scientists found out how did they find out I want you to go and study research look for something called operation operation deep freeze and operation Dominic operation Dominic operation deep freeze look for it search for it in the internet and wherever you can get it get the information read it this one nuclear test tanks they Huge bombs were sent to the sky. Huge nuclear bombs. Detonated. I have pictures for them. I'll show you when I have. And they discovered there is something big up here. They tried to break it with nuclear. It couldn't. And they... Good. So, so I'm seeing Hans... And um, I will stop at that. I'll stop at that. So, one, two. I told you that I want us to do the study fully, but I was just finishing so that those who are not members of this church will go away knowing there's something we should be studying and finding out, whether true or, or not. Yes, Mze. Now, my question is this one here. We know the universe is big. Yes. And there's only one which was lost. And this is our planet Earth. Yes. And the planet Earth has been given a light, the sun, to rule for the seasons. And the equator is the center. Equator being the center, where the sun goes to, to, to the south, goes to the north, and where I come from, we call it Mboni. 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 Yeah, in the hills. In the Kikamba. Yes. Okay. When we, we check, that's the way the sun goes. Sets. Goes to the south. It goes up to 22nd. South. 22nd uh, December. Yeah. To the, to the south, to the north. 22nd June. June. Mm. And from there it comes the season. Process, yes. So now the knowledge which the Lord wanted to, to do is within our planet Earth, uh -huh. where uh -huh. we are. Uh -huh. And where the devil was allowed to come. Yes. So now, why do we need this other history? Why? Why do we need that other history? Which one? 
the one you are now telling us there, okay. where, the, where the, the North Pole goes to there, because when the sun goes out, out that way, the Bibles which are printed in Canada, mm -hmm. there are people who take them, go into Spain for that, when there is no light, no, no, uh, no sun, for those days, we only see the Okay, what's your point? What's so, your point? Now what I'm asking, mm. why should we go waste a lot of time when the, the Bible has been written and given our limit and we know that God works on seasons. Okay, okay. And okay. we have been living on this world for so many years. All right. Now do we when do we want this other one? All because right. the ones we are talking about where I come from. There were those spirits All right. which were, were uh, when, when you go out, were controlling. All right. I and hear you say, I don't have all the time. I don't have all the time. You have yeah, made yes, your point? That, that, that is a point I, I want to make. Mm. Because in, uh, in Kikamba, we have got those demons. Mm -hmm. And the demons, those who were there, they were beating people. <laughs> like my brother was, <laughs> and gone out. Yes. When he came, he found one seated, and he was beaten. All right. So th those are the ones now where we, people were worshiping those places, and now they have built churches in those Thank you. places. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, you know, it, it, that question can only be addressed after we have done a, a full study, right? Yeah. I, I, but I hear you, Mze. I hear you. There is one other hand behind. Yes, my friend. Okay, thank you, Pastor, for sharing those messages. We are grateful. Now, um, there are several things which have been mentioned. I'll just ask questions. Maybe when you have time, you can respond. Well, no, no. I'll just take the questions because mm. I've said we'll have time. We'll okay. have time to go back and forth and, okay. and question, question this fully. Okay. Yes, so, so just raise them. It's valid. Okay. Just raise them. Then we'll have time to fully address it. Yes. Now, the first thing is regarding the immortality of the soul. Immortality? You have, you have said that we should not touch it. Non-immortality or immortality? Immortality of the soul. Mm -mm. I don't know. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. Our understanding uh -uh. Or, or the traditional understanding. Uh -uh. Don't, don't go far. Don't go far. Okay. Immortality, immortality of the soul. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't talk about immortality of the soul. I don't know. Maybe I got confused, but you okay. mentioned something which All did right. not die. The issue of spirits. Yeah. Yes. Issues. Something which did not die. Yes. Yeah. And the question is, do we really die? Do okay. we surely do die? Do we die? All right. Question one. Then, regarding angels, angels who came down. Yeah, we, we have now found a better term. Call them watchers. Yes. The watchers who fell, yes. Watchers who fell. Yes. Um, the question is, why is that not happening again now? Okay. And then the other question will be, or my understanding has been, when they fell, that will be when the children of God fell. Yes, sons. sons. More sons, sons of God fell, yeah. and that will be more of a moral fall than the actual than the actual falling yeah okay all right and then uh, about you mentioned something about egyptian pyramids yesterday yes yes we all agree that what those uh, pyramids and other stone structures they are all over the world by the way they are they all are over the world Egypt. yes they are all over the world yes and we cannot say that we have a technology that can replicate that right now yes um, but what we know is that uh, this earth is covered with thousands of meters and feet of sediment. Yes. The question will be why the flood did not cover those pyramids. Those pyramids. Okay. And then... Now, let me be, be sure so that I don't forget, unless you'll share me, with me the paper, right? Because mm. I don't want to lose them. Mm. You talk about the, the spirits questions and yes. death. Yes. So do we really die? Yes. Then you mentioned... The, the, the watchers, the falling the watchers. down. Why is it not happening again? Mm -hmm. And then three, 
Why did the flood not cover the pyramids? Why did the flood not cover the pyramids? Okay, all right. Yes? And then, um, does quoting books mean they are divine? They are, oh, yes. Are they part so, of, all right? So, for example, if Ellen White quotes Milton yes. or quotes some other historian, Pastor, Pastor, yeah. does that mean that that historian now has become divine okay. and whatever okay. else he has written we must can be just accepted. accept it thank you i must stop you there mm. yeah thank so you. we were supposed to handle the, the last one today i don't know at least this week and i told you revelation chapter what 10 has the answer it solves the problem of books and inspiration and quickly because i don't have time they, the publishing people had I promised them time but I've eaten into their time already. Uh, Revelation 10 talks about an angel that stood one leg to the sea and one leg to the land with a small book, holding a small book. And then uh, he, he, he made an announcement. He thundered like water. Yeah. And then John was told, go and pick the book and eat it. So he goes, takes the book, and actually eats the book. He says it was sweet in the mouth, but bitter in his stomach. And the interpretation is given. Let me just read the interpretation and then stop. Uh, but I, I have noted the questions. I will address them accordingly. I just want to read that one. It's important so that we can leave uh, knowing what it means or how to handle books. 10, verse number, verse number uh, 9. And so I went and, and an angel said to me, give me the little book. And he said to me, take it and eat it and it will make your stomach bitter but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Verse number 10, Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. 11, And, I, and he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Verse number 11 is the interpretation. That prophecy must be redone. Pro prophecy must be repeated. Now, what prophecy is this? And what is this book that is bitter? The bitter book is the message of the second coming. The message of the second coming. It was so sweet to share it, but the result was very painful. I told you this church was born out of it. The great disappointment. But, after the great disappointment, the prophecy says, you must prophesy again. The reason why we must prophesy again is it was necessary to have a prophet in 1844. Otherwise, the Christian church would have collapsed. So God had to bring a prophet by hook or by crook. And that prophet should have been a man. He refused. God picked a woman. And she had to prophesy again. And if you look at her works, they are all directing people back to where? To the Bible. It was deliberate. It was very deliberate. God did it to save the Christian church. Ellen White feels the special role of you must prophecy again. So where do you put her books? Revelation 10 verse 11. Her books are to take us back to the faith and the confidence in the prophecies of God's word. They serve that purpose. They are called little light for that reason. They are meant to direct our confidence back in spite of the disappointment. Go back. Go back. To nations, kingdoms, and peoples. Do you get it? Now, that then answers the question, how about the other books? The other books are not inspiration, unless you are referring to the extra canonical that are referred in the Bible. If they are mentioned or quoted in the Bible, then they are called biblically endorsed. Extra canonical, but biblically endorsed. That's how to treat them. And you, you can take, take any other book and see if they direct you back to the Bible, then you accept it. If they don't, you scan it. Which books should be on the, on the pulpit? The Bible and the Bible alone. But you can use the spirit of prophecy because of Revelation 10, verse 11. I think that is the end. Please, mommy, come. I hope I have been able to, to do something about books and the confidence we should have in books and that we should not fear. If the books are directing you back to build confidence in the, in the word of God, then they are acceptable.